This episode of Bourbon on Ice, presented by your friend Frosty and your bartender, Mike Whiskey, is brought to you by the Cape Media Center of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. The views and opinions expressed during this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of the Cape Media Center. Listener discretion is advised. Rosie, who's a sweetie pie? Who's a snuggly wuggly uggy hunk of monk of monk of boogie boogie woogie woo moo boo? You're so cute, yes you are. Yes you are. She's blind and deaf. Oh. Also, is that microphone on? It is. Roll the music. Welcome, listeners, to Bourbon on Ice. Where we talk about everything nerdy. Like gentlemen. Join us every week for our local Cape Cod take on, well, everything. Laugh, cry, be confused, and laugh some more. I'm your friend Frosty. And I'm your bartender, Mike Whiskey. Stay tuned. You think they'll like the episode? Oh, they'll definitely love it. Welcome, listeners, to an exciting... Ah, uh, hell with it. It's an episode. Oh, you, you don't have the enthusiasm up today? I do not. I never do. I can't remember one time I've ever been remotely happy on this show. He's never been enthused, people. Never. Also, there's no drink in front of me. And we're sitting by a bar. Then turn around, man. We're at the bar. I should be, like, three drinks in by now. But I'm not. I've showed amazing self-restraint. I you, don't know why. You've been here for five minutes and you should be th- in three drinks in by now? Yes. I really should be. I'm disappointing myself and my lineage, I'm assuming. You're not disappointing your diabetes. Boo. <laughs> boo. Medical issues. Boo. Not I fun. Agree. Medical issues are stupid. Yep. If only we could ignore them all and just run free and frolic and pretend that... You know, insulin issues or celiac disease aren't things. I got a cousin who's doing that. It's not going well for him. Didn't you say he died? No, he's not dead, but he might just as well be on death's door. (laughs) Everybody, I am your friend Frosty. And I'm your bartender, Mike Whiskey. This is another episode of Bourbon on Ice, where we talk all things nerdy, like like gentlemen. gentlemen. And we have a special guest with us in the studio. Yes, we... No, no, I can't do that. I can't do doggy speak, even though she's so darn cute. She is a cutie pie. Oh my gosh, must attempt to remain professional. But she's looking at us. Yes, hello. Because mm. we have food. Greetings and felicitations, Rosie. Rosalind, a topping day to you. Rosie the Riveter. Because she was born on Veterans Day. Can't, can't do it. Can't do it. Oh, she's too cute. Oh, come here, my sweet little hunk of love. We should probably burn this episode so no one hears it. Or so at least as part of the dialogue. She was 2009, so she's coming up on uh, 13. Uh, my childhood dog, Sammy, we got him on Independence Day, and I wanted to name him Indy. But, like, <laughs> the entire family said, no, no, that's corny. We're going to name him after Uncle Sam. <laughs> I'm so glad we all went with something respectful and dignified them like Sam. <laughs> oh, wow. I actually had a dog once that just coughed frequently, so we literally named him Coffee. Nice. <laughs> I really don't feel that well. I'm sorry. It's not a hangover. It's just I'm tired mm. from being up all night drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and that freaking time change thing. Oh, that gave us an extra hour, though. Yeah. Tell that to someone who had to do an Amazon package run this morning. <laughs> uh, all you people out there ordering things, how could you? But knowing this, I went out last night. I went to do something amazing and fun. What was it? Well, I couldn't think of anything, so I did something else instead. Oh. But it actually was pretty great. <laughs> What'd you do? I went to the music room over in Yarmouth. Ooh, very fun. The Music Room. It's a wonderful place, and as opposed to what it sounds like, it is actually, uh, you know, not some boring old conservatory. The Music Room in South Yarmouth, uh, sorry, West Yarmouth, gotta make sure I get that right. Yep. Uh, 541 Main Street, right across from the Cape Cod Inflatable Park, which is closed right now, because, you know, only a fool would be trying to swim at this point. You know what also is across from the Inflatable Park? The Jerky Emporium. Yes. Yes, I love that place. Alligator jerky. Oh my goodness. And hot honey. Gotta go. I actually just made some jerky myself. You make your own jerky? Uh, It's the first attempt at it. I made uh, a maple smokehouse beef. (gasps) Where's the other dog? 
I haven't seen him recently. You didn't, did you? I did not. Okay, just checking. And uh, a salt brine pork. You have far too much time in your hands. It took about four hours. You have far too much time in your hands. That is not fair. I think the pork needed more time, though. Mostly because it was so fatty. Anyway. Well, I went to the music room last night, which is an outstanding club over in West Yarmouth. And quite frankly, I was not disappointed at all. It is... Uh, well, if you look it up online, this is how they describe it. It's the next generation venue that will showcase the greatest live VIP musical experiences of both national and international acts alike. And it is right here on Cape Cod. Basically in walking distance for me. And I have I have been looking for someplace new to go on Saturday nights. And now I, I have it. This place, it was outstanding. It was beautiful. And they have a gallery. Ooh. They have a oh, really I... nice bar. Great staff. Good selection, delicious food, and, oh yeah, the talent was outstanding. Plus, there's a recording studio there. Oh, no way. Yeah, there's a recording studio there. Maybe we should do one of our episodes there. We should, and I should release my singing tracks. <coughs> Maybe not. I am wonderful, damn it. Absolutely wonderful. He's Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm not sure whether or not I'm insulted, but I'll, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> so, people, we're talking about something local, so I think this is uh, Locals on Locals today. Woohoo! Yay! If you head over to the music room, as I said, this one of a kind location is not just created by someone who said, I feel bored, I'm gonna open up a bar. This is someone who has spent years working in the music industry themselves, and uh, my other half actually happened to meet them. They were pounding the circuit, you know, looking for hotels to drop off flyers and things that during the summer and they were great i got to see them last night working the sun but they were really cool frankly these the people who run this place know what they're talking about and recruiting talent and also offering good acts it's not boring the entire bar is covered in artwork from michael friedman and who is that you may ask who is michael friedman since somebody's got to do it for you I'm so glad that you did that. At the moment, it is. They have a gallery in there that you can visit when they open, and it's not being you know, used as a green room. But he is a man who spent years taking pictures, photos of some of the biggest rock acts of the, uh, the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and he threw away the negatives. He misplaced them. Oh, no. And then one day, they turned up in his attic. Oh, ho, ho. They've all been printed, and now they are, they're out there. They're at the Cleveland Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and here on the Cape. So it's amazing. There's this outstanding shot of Janis Joplin. I just, I wanted it. I was thinking, could I, you know, potentially, like, smuggle this thing out? <laughs> That's why you always look in the box, Perry the Platypus. What? Well, you don't remember the episode where Doofenshmirtz is, um... Like college videotape where he falls into the toilet on roller skates gets leaked. And it's because he that. didn't, because he uh, threw away the. He threw away a box of his old stuff and that was in there. Yep. Oh in, my. in the <laughs> attic. And he didn't think to look in the box because he thought, my life could go on completely unchanged by without the contents of what's in this box. <laughs> Always look in the box. <laughs> yeah. I have a friend, well, I had a friend years ago, the two of us used to. I'm just going to say it. Have dirty, rotten, kinky sex. And one of the things is we would write, like, dirty stuff <laughs> on pieces of paper and give it to each other. Like, we should do this. Oh, my goodness. I'm just hoping that we destroyed those pieces of paper and no one ever finds them. That's why you look in the, in the box. box. <laughs> the wisdom of whiskey. <laughs> okay, more about this place. Uh, the Music Room last night played host to, and I've got their CD right here. I bought it because they were just damn good. Ry uh, Harper and the Midwest Kind. The album is Rise Up. And where do these people come from? Why, down under, mate. No way. Yeah, absolutely. It was a night of outstanding blues and rock, and there were didgeridoos on the stage. Oh, that's awesome. Those things sound awesome. They did! They did! <laughs> Harper is uh, Peter D. Harper, the uh, lead singer. Also featuring uh, Bobby Llewellyn, uh, Dan Ozzy Anderson, Jim Pryor, Jeff Michael, and let me just let me just be honest. I had a great time. 
I had a great time rocking out to this. Plus, you know, good mozzarella sticks. Mmm. Can't go wrong with a good moz. A good moz. A good moz. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Uh, there was actually... Uh, the, the menus are on records. That's... Hmm. They have records that are sitting around the room, and the menu is written on them. I said, this is a great way to recycle really terrible records. What if this was Engelbert Humperdinck? Well, no one would miss it. I was about to say, I hope they're bad records. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, some old Yeezy stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I bitter with him? Yes. The man's <laughs> insane right now. He's insane. Yes. It's like the Charlie Sheen thing that happened all those years ago, and everyone is like, oh, goodness, what a terrible man. We'll discuss him no more. Until 7 o'clock when the news comes on. <laughs> Rosie, do you want some popcorn? Rosie wants popcorn. You're not getting it. She's giving me the eyes. No, yeah, not the she, eyes. She wants to jump up. Okay, let me just move. She can still clear about three, four feet. I was walking through my house one day, and my doggy, Alfredo, who is a adorable Italian greyhound. Yep. He saw that I was holding a sandwich in my hand. Delicious chicken cutlet sandwich. Ooh, nice. He comes up to me wagging his tail. I said, no. And I turned around and walked away. And all of a sudden, I felt on the back of my head. <laughs> I turn around, and I'm like, he's still sitting there. I did you just freaking jump and hit me in the head? Yes, he did. He did. <laughs> <laughs> this is a... He, Italian greyhounds are not tall. They're, they're small, but he, he it, used the powerful legs. It was premeditated. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was trying to knock me out ninja style to steal the sandwich. <laughs> so, what did I see? What did you see? Well, as I said, I saw Harper and the Midwest Kind. What happened was they took to the stage... And frankly, their sound was intense. How intense was it? I was oh gonna make goodness. a really, I was gonna make a really dirty joke, but then I'd have to mark this episode adult content, and I'm kind of liking where it's going. <laughs> We're talking harmonicas, bass guitars, really nasty sounding licks. We are talking, as I said, the didgeridoos. I love didgeridoos. I love the name. I love the sound. He looks out at us and, and <laughs> he says to the room, I have to say that this is the sexiest group of people I've ever played in front of. And I'm like two beers in at this point. I shouted, oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not my wisest moment. <clears throat> of course, I'm sure he says that to all the people. I'm sure he says that to every venue. But then he also <laughs> pointed out that, you know, I look at all the people in this room. I think I've emptied West Yarmouth. <laughs> A lot of drinkers in here. Is there nothing else to do tonight? Another guy shouted, They're sure the bleep is not! <laughs> <laughs> he gets us! It, it's true. There it, is nothing better to do on the Cape in the winter. Than drink? Yeah. Well, that's not true. There are things to do. I was going to say, you know, building a snowman and making a snow angel. But then, of course, you stop being five years old and then there's nothing to do. <laughs> I hate snow. I hate the winter. I enjoy snow. As an adult, with a car, and a mortgage to pay, and property to protect, and a job, I hate snow now. Oh, um, for work, just let me remind you now while I'm thinking about it. You can ask for treads to put on your boots that will, for their metal treads that will stick to the ice, or non-stick, for non non-slip. Pretty I, useful. I have been informed... That I'm going to have to bring bags of kitty litter, which I will have to purchase myself, into this truck. They told you that? Yes, they told me that. Tell me this is a ridiculous lie that they're making up to scare me. Because it's working? I mean, I, I get the salt and the kitty litter from work. <sighs> so, again, this was just their evil plan to scare me. I don't know how your office runs things, but I like my tiny little office. One of these days, I'm going to find your office and do something horrible. Like, turn the lights off while you're working. I don't work with the lights on. Fine, then I'll... Um... Uh, I'll tell everyone your dark and terrible secret. Which is? I don't know, I'm coming up with it right now. <laughs> Bluff called. <laughs> Damn it! 
Back to the Frosty game. My dark and terrible secret. I'm a Yeezy fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> the Cape Media Center, located in Dennisport, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, is a non-profit community media center and the public access TV station for the towns of Barnstable, Yarmouth, Dennis, Harwich, and Chatham. Our mission is to build community through media, enhance democratic communication, and facilitate free expression by providing these towns with a state-of-the-art media resource center. Members can become trained in our video and audio equipment and produce their own media content. Membership includes training classes, access to our field equipment, studios and facility, as well as airtime. Podcasters and music producers can share their content on our website. For more information, visit capemedia.org. This episode of Bourbon on Ice is brought to you by Market Street Bookshop and Mashpee Commons, located at 31 Market Street, Mashpee, Massachusetts. Embrace diversity and find support for local authors and artists at the Market Street Bookshop, where your favorite new read is just a browse away. For more information, give them a call at 508-539-6985. While we're talking about this, I should tell you that I got the thing that you wanted. It was horrible. It was dark. The things I had to do just to get it. I'm talking favors sinful dark favors and dark you, alleys things all you had to do was change the clock on your ds it was hard to find that pokemon <laughs> letty buff for you i will never live down the th- yeah it was easy i just i just went and got it for you yeah so i'll meet you at the pokemon center <laughs> while that's going on we'll just keep talking uh, now uh, this guy as i said last night he was uh, he was hysterical he was really good up on stage and uh, as i said i bought the album the didgeridoos kept getting played, and he pointed... There were three of them. They were very beautifully crafted. These were not just some simple things. He said very bluntly that you had to respect them because they're still alive. Well, only two of them, as I said. Only two of them were alive. One of them is made of plastic, so that one's not technically alive and never was unless you believe, like me, that everything has a soul in it, which I actually don't believe because that's crazy. Well, plastics are made from gasoline. Which gasoline made... was made from dinosaurs. Yeah. Wow. That is a deep dive right there. That is a deep dive. Ridiculous, but still deep. So your to- plastic toy dinosaurs were made from dinosaurs. Dude, you just blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, um, here, think, here's your I, ladybug. Yep, ladybug. You, can, you can take Floopity back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're not going to explain that. However, he did point out one thing that one particular one has almost killed him. He was saying that it takes a lot of air to play this didgeridoo. And if, if you ever seen one of these things, it is, it's like the longest wooden flute, which is not a flute. It's basically a cello that has been beaten, crunched down, and someone stuck a piece of, like, like a reed that you can blow through. <laughs> okay, this is a really bad analogy. It but still, really it's bad. a really, really long wooden thing that you have to blow through, and the sound is intense. But one of them, he called Heather the Bitch. You know, I actually heard somewhere. You're just going to let me get away with that? Yeah. Um, I actually heard somewhere, and, like, I was, like, in elementary school when I heard this. But apparently, and I've, I'm I'm probably wrong. I, I embrace being wrong. In fact, tell me in the comments section how wrong I am. It's good for the al- algorithm. <laughs> Um, that the didgeridoo players actually learn a technique where they can breathe in and out at the same time. That sounds useful. Right. You would never drown if you knew that. You could perform any sort of musical number while doing dance moves. Yeah. If you took up cheerleading, that would be easier. But I don't do that. I don't think this guy was going to do that. No. So you're just going to let me get away with the Heather the Bitch thing? There's a lot worse things he could have called it. Well, that is what he called it. He went on to explain... Especially as an Australian, there's a lot of worse things he could have called it. He went on to explain to all of us why it was called that. Because Heather hurts him. (laughs) Apparently, Heather gives him splinters on his lips. And he gets so mad at her that he calls her a bitch all the time. Hence, he introduced us to his very long, beautiful black didgeridoo... Heather the bitch. <laughs> At more than one point, he like turned and spoke to her, like, just sitting there on the stand with um the other with the female singer on his other side, like waving the tambourine and doing this amazing tribal uh, shriek. But then he would turn and say, "Heather, what do you think?" 
<laughs> it was awesome. Okay, you got it? Yep. Okay. All right, I think that's it. I think I'm done. Okay, I just traded you a Lediba because we're playing Pokemon as we're doing all of this. And what did I name it? Oh, I didn't see it. Well, I wanted to help complement your booze Pokemon team theme. Oh, my goodness. We named it Hard Cider. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> there was no Hard Cider last night for me, which was disappointing, but they had Bud Light, which is really good for me. Mm. I had two Bud Lights and a tray of mozzarella sticks, and it came up to 20 bucks altogether. Nice. That was really cost-effective. It was. I could have gotten blitzed for a very good price. Not that I recommend that, ever. Drive responsibly. I mean, drink responsibly, and then don't drive. Yes. Help me. Bail me out of here. I'm not bailing you out of anything. Uh, but, uh, 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 walls closing in. Darkness. <laughs> Shovel. Digging. Dirt falling. Uh, the only problem was that I had work the next morning, so of course I couldn't stay past a certain point. I had to rush off. But I stayed very late, and I enjoyed the entire thing. Good. And they've got some interesting acts coming up, which I'm definitely going to be heading back for. You know what? Uh, to the internet. Away! I really love saying that. I'm going to look up the schedule right now, because they had something uh, tonight, actually. Well, actually, in just a few hours, at 5 o'clock, they're going to be having a harmonica workshop with... Legends, James Montgomery, Peter D. Harper, and Cheryl Arena. And Peter D. Harper was the one who was there last night. That's tonight? Yep. When? Uh, there's going to be one at 5 o'clock and one at uh, 7 p.m. Oh, snap. You See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, come back. We have to finish the episode. He's gone. All right, let's talk awful things about him. I don't like his hair. Or his little rat face, and he's still sitting. <laughs> the, dog, the dog heard what I was saying and disagreed. <laughs> He's still here, people. Oh, Murphy. Now, coming up on uh, Saturday, November 12th, is the Paul Nelson Band, which I'm probably going to make an appearance at that. Huh. And they're holding a uh, hun Hurricane Ian relief fundraiser. 100% of all funds will go to uh, All Hands and Hearts. Oh, very cool. That's going to be on November 13th. And as you point out, they've already started their singing competition for this season, the uh, Unsung Heroes Volume 2. It's big prize, and you have to have written your own song and be able to perform it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, Draw the Line. Aerosmith, Aerosmith endorsed premiere tribute. That's going to be on November 17th. George Gritzbach. And uh, where was the one that I saw that I wanted? It? Oh, Tiffany is coming. People from the 80s rejoice. You can all dance and sing to I think we're alone now, alone now. There doesn't seem to be anyone around. And all the other rousing songs that we know that she's done, like... um, That song is actually much older than the 80s. I know, I know. But that's she but... made it more popular, let's be honest about that. <laughs> My dad, actually, the elder nerd, <laughs> um, hates that song with a I, burning passion. I remember because his sister would play that over and over. Over and over and over and over again. In December, on December 2nd, there's a group called the Nervous Eaters. I'm going to go see that just because of the name. Solely because of the name. Functopus will be there on December 9th. They always are playing on Main Street Hyannis multiple times throughout the summer when they have the street fairs. I like them. I like them. They're really good. Hmm. Then, of course, N Train. A tribute to the Allman Brothers. And, oh, there was one I saw. Ooh, Love Sexy, a tribute to Prince. I know so many of my friends that would love to come to that. <laughs> I am literally the only f person in my friend group that is a, f a fan of Prince. I'm going to be going to that alone. <laughs> uh, oh, here it is. Um, November 11th is Dead Man's Waltz. And oh, I really, really, really want to see that. So the way this works is you can either get into the bar... Okay. There'll be some of, most of, many events don't have a cover, but some do. And the cover is reasonable, but at the same time, you can get a table and sit further up. There's a little candle on the table. If you turn it off, it'll summon waiters to, you know, do your bidding. Bring me the blood of a pixie in a hand-carved cup. No, I don't think they'll do that. Maybe I, not. No, no. This is um, not Delinea. <laughs> I'm shutting this because we're done trading Pokemon. Alrighty. I can't think of anything else I, I have that you that you want. I want the Cyndaquil. You're not getting my Cyndaquil. You breed it with a ditto. 
Isn't it too late for that? No. How do we get to this? How do we get to talking <laughs> about Pokemon sex again? <laughs> what happens with us? Anyway, uh, what was that? That was the uh, the young lady, the fiance. <gasps> MJ, is she listening to us right now? Because I mean, she is listening. Oh my gosh. Yep. Oh my gosh, MJ, hi. That's great. That is awesome. <laughs> I can't believe. <gasps> I can't believe that she's been listening this entire time. That's so cool. It is cool. Wait, is she asleep? She is asleep. Oh my. We're going to be haunting her dreams. No. What is she holding? Is that a stuffed shark? That is a stuffed shark. I, bu- I bought her the stuffed shark. You bought her a stuffed shark? It's, it was her first stuffed animal. I feel weird doing this now. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it there? Um, Add one hour and change AM to PM. Oh my gosh, it's 4.25 in the morning. Dude, shut it off. Yeah, she's let, the, let the poor deer sleep. No, she's fine. She's a heavy, light sleeper. <laughs> oh, shut it off for my benefit. For crying out loud, we're watching a sleeping woman. It's it's weird. For you. <laughs> I'm not on the intimate terms with her that you are. <laughs> I'm just some stranger. A gay one, but still. It's voyeuristic. And for me, that's, that's creepy. I mean, I... I am a voyeur. There's clubs we meet behind bushes with trench coats and binoculars. We trade skeleton keys and we, you know, talk about bodies that we have buried and whatnot. But you know, I'm not. I'm not really supposed to be doing it to my uh, my good friend's fiance. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. The last thing I will bring up is that the recording studio there is, as I said, open for recording. Cool. They have video production and reg- and regular, well, regular, that's... Audio. Yeah, there we go. Audio and video. I would love it if I actually had enough musical talent so we could release a song, but we should get Sammy. Yeah. Sam the Guitar Man. We really should make a professional <laughs> little thing with him. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, wait, who's that guy that does the uh, Twisted Christmas album? Bob Rivers. We'll be, we'll be like Bob Rivers. Instead of <laughs> releasing a Twisted Christmas album, though, we'll just be releasing, you know, Twisted New England songs. Awful, awful things that should not be listened to by anyone, especially not children or women or <laughs> people that you love or anyone with good taste. So, like, the album will never sell. <laughs> but, yeah, we could do that. We could, like, get someone to write us a song and we could sing it together. Yeah. Record it in the music room, release a single... Sell one copy, but, you know, it has to be $10 million for one download. And then we, once that happens, we'll never have to work again. <laughs> it might be better if we just play Powerball. It's supposed to be at, like, a billion. I'm very upset by the fact that I'm not going to win. I'm not playing, but I also know I'm not going to win. <laughs> the odds are against me. They're against everyone. Also, and then if multiple people win, you have to split it with them. My feeling is... Blunt and simple, we've reached such a volume with the Powerball that if you possibly won, your life would be ruined. Like, more than a billion dollars, you're going to have all the people that you have never known you were related to suddenly showing up on your door. You're going to have everyone that you've ever borrowed cash from coming up and claiming interest. You're going to have people that you haven't seen since high school dropping by. Like, Hey, remember that crush I always used to have on you? No. Well, I had one. (laughs) That's my... That's that's my favorite. That's that not in the sense that like that's my favorite, but that's that's my favorite because it's the worst one. <laughs> this was really bad commercial years ago. Back when I was in middle school, I think they were doing a. I think it was Levi. Levi Jeans was doing a giveaway where if you happen to buy a pair of pants, it would be stuffed with like five thousand fifty thousand five hundred thousand dollars something along those lines wow the pockets would be filled with cash my guess was it was probably going to be a check but anyway the commercial for this is there's a guy in his high school wearing his levi jeans and girls are coming up to him hey billy how you doing and they're suddenly slipping their hand into his pocket (laughs) the the boyfriends are like leering at him and there's this one girl she's really angry hey billy what's shaking and she's like pins him against the wall and she's like, pulling out his pockets <laughs> and you know he gets knocked to the ground and the commercial ends with like a big jock walking up like hey billy what's shaking and billy looks at the camera <gasps> <laughs> what a, what a terrible tasteless commercial but still <laughs> if you win the powerball basically that's going to be your life 
<laughs> Sorry, Billy, wherever you are. <laughs> Bad luck, Billy. <laughs> <laughs>